Hi. I'm Lone Candle. The bottom line is that the great 2021-22 increase in gas prices was caused primarily by two factors. The increases during the end of 2020 and most of 2021 had to deal with oil producers reducing production because of the COVID-induced decrease in demand, and then these producers too slowly raising production when demand increased again. The great spike in 2022 was caused by the war in Ukraine. Other factors are minor. Biden's actions or lack of actions had trivial effects. Despite the flood of talking points coming from the right that we should blame Biden for higher gas prices, these prices aren't caused by him, nor are they primarily the fault of greedy oil companies. About 53.6% of the price of gas is determined by the price of crude oil, an internationally traded commodity whose price is determined by worldwide supply and demand. About 16% of the price is caused by federal and state taxes. 15.6% is from distribution and marketing, which includes shipping costs, the price of local competitors, and fueling location. And finally, 14.4% is determined by refining costs and profits. If we look at the change in the cost contribution of these categories since 2020, it's clear that the gasoline cost coming from crude oil has greatly grown. The increase in the cost of gasoline is caused by the increase in the cost of crude oil. In April 2020, oil was 60% of the price of gasoline. A year before, it was 52%. And in April 2020, during the pandemic, oil was so cheap that it was 25% of the price of gasoline. With the pandemic, people went into voluntary and mandatory lockdowns and businesses were closed or receiving little business. Millions of people worldwide lost jobs and could not travel. This greatly reduced the demand for gasoline. Oil producers responded by producing less. Before the pandemic, U.S. oil production reached a record high of 13 million barrels a day. During the pandemic, by May 2020, production fell to 9.7 million a day, a drop of 3 million. Worldwide, production was reduced by 10 million barrels, 10% of global supply. Once economies began opening up again with a new, more open phase of the pandemic, demand for gas came back faster than expected and even surpassed pre-pandemic levels, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Producers have been unable or unwilling to match this demand with new supply, so prices have gone up. Demand for gasoline came back during the final three months of the Trump presidency. Consequently, the price of oil rose 32%. In October 2020, the monthly average was 39.4 per barrel of crude oil. And in January 2021, it was $52 a barrel. In Biden's first three months in office, this price rose by 19% to $61.72 a barrel. Then 17% to $72.49 a barrel in the following three months. These prices stayed between 70 and 80 until January 2022. The price surge happened worldwide. Both oil production and refining are down and not coming back quickly. Several factors have caused oil suppliers to be slow in meeting the increased demand, despite high prices. For one, suppliers were not ready for the speed of demand's return. More than just not ready for the speed, the depressed demand created several issues by causing some oil companies to go out of business, small stripper wells to be permanently capped, refineries to be shut down, and oil workers to leave the industry. When demand returned, these factors made it difficult to ramp oil production back up. Furthermore, the general worker shortage made the oil worker shortage worse. Equipment has also been hard to find. Oil companies have also chosen not to drill as much as they could have. Some oil companies' money that could have been spent on further increasing production has instead been spent on stock buybacks and dividends. Exxon, Chevron, BP, and Shell spent $44 billion on such things in 2021. In the last eight years, there have been two oil price crashes, so executives fear that the price may fall in the future and that therefore investments won't be worth it. Another factor dampening their expectations is the potential growth of electric vehicles and renewable energy, which would reduce demand for oil. 
investment in refining is also limited due to the expected energy transition. These companies and their investors don't want a large investment in new oil if the high prices won't last, and apparently investors are demanding greater returns from oil companies in the form of these buybacks and dividends. It's not just U.S. oil producers. OPEC has also been slow to ramp up production. The $70 to $80 per barrel price range was broken in January 2022 when Russia amassed troops next to Ukraine with a threat of invasion, increasing the barrel price to $83.22 in January and $91.64 in February. As part of pressure on Russia, Biden decided to stop importing Russian oil, and this helped push prices to $120 per barrel by causing Russian imports to reroute elsewhere and creating the need to backfill the missing oil. Because oil is a commodity whose price is determined by worldwide supply and demand, when either supply or demand changes significantly anywhere in the world, that will affect the price of U.S. gasoline. So, when war threatens to disrupt supply, when sanctions squeeze supply, these increase the cost of gas at U.S. pumps. Before the Russian war, we had about a 77 cent increase in U.S. gasoline prices from the pre-pandemic prices. Once war threatened and happened, we had a $1.61 increase. Thus, most of the increase from pre-pandemic gasoline prices was caused by the Russian war, with a significant increase before the war caused by suppliers being unable or unwilling to match rising demand as we entered a new phase of the pandemic. Due to global warming and other environmental concerns, Biden has been less supportive of the oil industry than some would like. While such actions, or lack of actions, will have some effects on gas prices in the long run, they have little to no effect on recent prices. Examples of complaints are the canceling of the Keystone Pipeline, regulations involving refineries, lack of clarity on future federal regulations, limits on federal lands, lease for drilling, and an emphasis on clean energy. Generally, these things may affect investment and therefore future prices of oil, but their effects on current prices are limited. Even experts who criticize Biden for unclarity, regulations, and other oil-unfriendly policies acknowledge that his actions affect oil prices in the long run, not the recent spikes. The Keystone XL pipeline wouldn't be operational now even if Biden didn't take away the permit. Only 8% was completed when canceled. It would carry Canadian oil sands crude oil from Canada to U.S. refineries. This crude is particularly heavy and therefore more expensive to produce and refine. So, it's not a low-cost oil. It may not have moved gas prices by a single penny. Biden has allowed the Line 3 Minnesota pipeline to finish, so it's not like he has blocked all pipelines. Like Keystone, this line brings crude oil from Alberta to the U.S., and other Canadian imports come by rail, so the impact of Biden's action was not so great. Biden's pause on sales of new leases was only temporary because a federal judge paused the pause. Biden later auctioned off a record number of oil and gas leases in the Gulf of Mexico. Companies are not utilizing all the leases they already have, so if they truly wanted to drill on federal lands, they could. As discussed earlier, companies and investors want dividends and stock buybacks, so they don't want to use all the leases they have. More leases could still encourage investment, though, which could affect future prices. Certainly, future prices would be lower if there wasn't a concern for the warming and other environmental impacts of fossil fuels. But these concerns are not limited to the Biden administration. Lower demand for oil would happen without them because many people and other countries see the real negative impacts of burning such fuels. So, when it comes to investment and drilling, investors and oil companies may fear less demand and drill less even without administration actions. Such actions have also been limited by Congress and the Supreme Court. So Biden and most Democrats were not able to do a lot of what they wanted. Remember, in Congress, the Democrats don't have a filibuster-proof majority, and it only takes one conservative or oil-friendly Democratic senator 
to stop bills from becoming laws. Additionally, oil production has increased since Biden entered office. So, it's not like Biden led the country to a decrease in oil production. Biden has also done some things to try to lower gas prices and increase supply. He has released oil from the emergency reserve, proposed softening rules on ethanol blending, and opened more areas to drilling. None of these will have major impacts on the current price of oil. He also has been trying to get oil-producing countries to produce more. In a debate about future oil prices, one can discuss the environmental advantages of limiting oil production versus the pros of more investment and drilling. But these things are not what's causing the recent spikes. Some have accused the sellers of oil and gas of greed. Publicly traded oil producers are making record profits, and they could, for the goodness of humanity, forego profits in the name of helping their fellow man. But that's not how the free market system works. In a market system, if you're selling a commodity whose supply is low compared to demand, you get to sell that commodity for lots of money. One can challenge capitalism if they want, but this isn't evidence of particular greed. In past times of high gas prices, there have been investigations of oil companies on their price setting, but these investigations haven't come up with much evidence of price gouging. Oil producers could also be accused of greed for not investing to produce more oil and instead loading up the wallets of investors. Every dollar of stock buybacks and dividends could be a dollar spent on producing more oil. Chevron's CEO, Mike Worth, said that they could afford to invest, but the equity market is not sending signals to do that. Investors don't like the uncertain future of oil prices, but do like money right now. The CEO of Pioneer said that whatever the price of oil, they aren't changing their growth plans. He doesn't think the industry can grow even if the president wants them to. The Occidental Petroleum CEO said she wants to pay the shareholders. OPEC has followed the same trend as U.S. companies, partly because they make so much profits off the high prices. Maybe this is investor greed, but greed is supposed to motivate investors. And if investors expected gas prices to stay high, they'd support more drilling. Their lack of support for investment isn't simply a story of greed, but a story of the expectations of less future demand for oil due to the energy transition. Another accusation has been on sellers of gas at the pump, gas station owners. Even once the prices of oil began to fall, gas prices stayed high. Were they unethically taking advantage of the situation? Even though gas prices shoot up quickly, they lower slowly. The actual price of oil is dropping faster than the price of gasoline. This is the normal pattern. It may be that retailers are taking advantage to make extra money. It may be that they want to make up money lost due to price swings. And it may be that price changes take time to filter through the supply chain. The oil a retailer sells now may have been purchased before the current lower oil prices. The uncertainty of prices can also slow the dropping of gas prices. A gas station may see that oil prices are dropping, but also suspect that they'll rise again shortly, so they don't lower prices as a form of protection from price uncertainty. Most gas stations, even those with the logo of a major oil company, are owned separately so they need to make a profit on top of what they bought the gas for. On the selling of gas, gas stations tend to make low margins, averaging 1.4%. They make up for that with profits from selling items in their stores. Because of this, retailers can actually benefit from low gas prices in that it makes more customer money available for store purchases and can keep customers in better moods which facilitates more in-store buying. So it's not obvious that gas stations are unfairly taking advantage of the situation. It's important to remember that oil is an internationally traded commodity. There is a lot of oil bought and sold in a day, so it takes huge impacts on supply or demand to make a difference in gas prices. 
Biden's policies haven't had much impact, although their impact could be greater in the future. Oil companies and gas stations don't appear to be unusually price gouging, although keeping an eye on them is still good. The price spikes are driven by two things. One, a quick increase in demand as people came out of lockdown and spent more money, while at the same time an oil industry that failed to keep up with supply due to the surprise of the increase of demand, the damage to their abilities caused by closing things down, laying off workers, equipment shortages, and the general shortage of labor that the economy as a whole is facing, and a hesitancy on the part of oil companies and investors to ramp up drilling due to not expecting gas demand to remain this high. The second cause of the price spikes is the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Don't be fooled by the biased, the partisan, and the liars. Although there can be an interesting debate about whether Biden's oil and environmental policies are the best for the country in the long run, Biden didn't cause these gas prices. I'm Lone Candle. Like me, comment me, love me. Mwah.